from the Amundu. It is a, another cool day here in central Portugal. We had another night of rain, which was great. It rained from about seven o'clock right through to morning. And out here, out the front, this is what it's looking like. It actually smells lovely out here. It's really, really fragrant with a wet pine smell in the air. It is really nice. There's some low clouds hanging over the trees at the back of the street there. And the leaves on our lime tree at the end of the garden are going brown now. This is a new addition to the road. They put up one of the driving mirrors on the corner here. They did that a couple of days ago. It's actually quite good because we've said before they should have a mirror there because it is a blind spot. So it's good that that's there now. It is pretty much tractor traffic in our town though. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Story has been up for a while and she's had her breakfast. She had bananas and a bit of toast. And she is just down here playing in the kitchen with some non-harmful items. What have you got there? Wooden spoon, muffin tin. It's keeping you happy, isn't it? Keeping you occupied. And I'm about to make a coffee for Jay and I to start our day off. I opened a new coffee yesterday, this Nicola Cafe Cremoso. It's quite good and it was actually on offer in the shop, about one euro 80 or something. I don't remember exactly, but it was good value. <laughs> so we got that one. While the coffee is brewing, I've just noticed outside it started raining again. I like cosy rainy days at home and having the window open here, you can hear the rain, you can hear some birds tweeting, it's a nice sound. And I don't think we're really going out today for anything, we may pop to the shop for some bread and things like that but otherwise it's just a day at home for us. Hello, I've been up for a while now, I've had my shower and I've even given Eden the dog a bath, so she's a little bit damp, but it's not that cold even though it's been raining. A shiny dog, you left a little wet patch on the sofa there haven't you? You smell OT fresh though, hey Story can you smell Eden? Why don't you give her a stroke? Still can't reach her can you? Give this an hour and they'll be all over the place. First choice of the day, book. Hey, it's not a nibble book, it's for reading. I'm going to be working from my computer in this room for most of today. So I've closed all the doors around me and we've put a child gate up in the hallway. This was left here for us by the landlady. It's a funny design, I've never seen anything like it before. It's not an opening gate, you actually have to use your strength to pull it out and then when you push it back in, it expands and locks into place. It does work though, story hasn't managed to get out yet. <laughs> the only problem is I can't get out either, or Eden. Yeah, we're all trapped in here together. You okay with that? <laughs> you in prison? It's alright, we can be in prison together. How's that sound? It is a bit irritating having to lift that up every time, so we are jumping over it a lot too. Hey Story, are you listening to some music out here? Trying to, but the internet's been very slow. Oh. <laughs> yes. Do you have some complaints? Who's this? <laughs> I like music. <laughs> we found that story seems to like anything with a bouncy, happy, upbeat. She likes a little bit of dubstep as well. <laughs> a little bit of EDM. Story likes a bit of everything to dance to. You coming back to me? You're very good at climbing steps now. I mentioned the other day that I set up a standing desk for Sasha. She has actually been using it once or twice, but she's not sure if it's actually doing much for her back yet. But she's gonna come and join me in this room today because she says it's lonely out there in the kitchen on her own. What's happening in here now? 
getting everything out of the box. It's not Easter. Why are you wearing bunnies? <laughs> it doesn't have to be Easter to wear bunnies. There's bunnies everywhere. <laughs> bunnies everywhere at all times. It's not for eating story. No. Oh, cuddle. You know, little mouse. It's all right, Eden. We haven't forgotten about you. Love you very much. The stand up desk is being utilised. Story's right here with all her toys. Story is about to have egg for the first time. Now, if you don't know already, we've been raising Story vegan as we are trying to be vegan ourselves. And the doctor recently said at her vaccination that her next vaccination is going to have an egg protein in it. Sasha is making a scrambled egg for Story and we're going to introduce her to it to see if there's any allergic reaction. It's a safety precaution, if anything. We're going to have to monitor her closely after this to see if she has any kind of allergic reaction to it. <laughs> How did it feel cooking an egg? Yeah? <laughs> <That's my hand. laughs> this is a bit of a weird situation for us because we haven't been plant-based our whole life so we've obviously eaten a lot of meat and eggs in our lifetime but now that we haven't been cooking with eggs for such a long time it does feel a bit gross to even buy them in the shop it felt really weird but this is something we need to do for our child so here we go with an egg and I've put it in a separate bowl just in case you are allergic to an egg it won't contaminate the toast okay so try a bit Dropped it straight on the floor. <laughs> Gross. It's a bit of a weird texture, isn't it? Let's try. <laughs> oh, I don't like this. <laughs> How about a bit of toast? There you go. Oh, straight for the toast. Yeah, I'll have that, thanks. <laughs> Is there another way to do this that doesn't feel like <laughs> weird forced feeding? Maybe we could like put some I'll on leave a. Leave it out and she can just help herself to it. Mm. We put some on her skin or. Would that work? Mm, I don't know. So the symptoms of an egg allergy are similar to any kind of food allergy. They're a rash, like digestive problems that so can cause diarrhea and even vomiting. So after, I think it said either immediately or up to a few hours after eating the egg, you have to like watch for any rashes and things like that. This isn't the first allergy experiment we've done with Story. We've also introduced her to peanut butter. With the peanuts and Story. I put a bit of actual peanut butter, just a very, very small amount behind her ear, like a skin test. Nothing, there was no reaction until 24 hours. It was the next day, but uh, she got a little bit of a raised red mark on her skin where the peanut butter had been. But I've read a bit more into it and they say that if a child is initially allergic to peanut butter, if it's not severe, you can try again and introduce it again, maybe at two years. I'm gonna leave the peanut butter for now because it is quite a harsh nut <laughs> to begin with and we'll hopefully try again at two years old because peanut allergies, children can actually grow out of them if they're not severe to begin with. So we'll try that again in another year and I am gonna make some almond butter to try that, uh, just a gentler nut. Aiden, yeah. away. Has she got it in her mouth now? Yeah, she just took a bit of egg. Holding it in there. <laughs> Bit of a funny texture, isn't it? Eden, not for you. <laughs> Eden wants that egg. <laughs> Don't you want the egg, Eden? I'm not sure. I do not want it. Okay. <laughs> oh no, I spat it out. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's gross. Uh, Eden, we have to clean this sofa. <laughs> so we had two small pieces of the egg. She wasn't interested in it anymore. She was pushing my hand away. But she has consumed some, so we are now on egg watch <laughs> to see what happens and if she's okay with eggs. And I'm making Jay and I some lunch. I have cooked up some lentils, which I will do something with shortly. They're nearly cooked, about five more minutes and they'll be done. It's still raining out here. It's been raining constantly for the last three hours. We are staying in. So this is lunch. The lentils, I just added some cumin and chilli to, some spinach, coriander, topped with chickpeas and sunflower seeds. Look at this steaming bowl of greatness that Sasha's made for me. It smells delicious. It smells like Moroccan food. We don't eat lentils enough, do we? We bought a ton of green lentils a while back and they've just been sitting in the jar. And then now that our pasta and rice has run out. The only time I ever really do lentils is when I do that chestnut and lentil roast. Yeah. 
you know, this would be a good replacement for rice, wouldn't it? Mm. You're back in prison, aren't you? <laughs> ah. ah! And look who else is in prison. You're eating the dog. You're still trapped out there. This is a problem, isn't it? Let's take you back in. Come on, <laughs> don't be afraid. Come. My files are rendering. Story refuses to have a nap. She's still wandering around. Eating the dog has just been licking herself. And mummy is at the standing desk. Sorry. Yeah? Yeah. Any benefit or you don't like it? Not really any benefit. No? The only benefit is that we're all in the same room. <laughs> and I'm not like a loner outside by myself. Well how about we just bring a chair here and then you can just uh, <laughs> you can sit at this area instead. Yeah, maybe. That work. Story's having a little read. She's really good at opening those flaps. Page turning master. <laughs> you chasing Eden? Story has been quite active today and she skipped her afternoon nap so I think we're going to have some trouble putting her down to sleep tonight. Mummy's just sitting with her right now. I'll leave you be. Eden the dog is pacing around like mad even though her dinner's out and she's got eggs and she's refused them. This is the gross Eden area. Rejected. It has rained quite a lot today. That's what it's looking like outside. Nice bit of blue up there. Darker grey over there. We haven't really been able to get out much because we've basically spent all our money and we're waiting for a payment to come in from some of our clients. That means home days for now. If you haven't seen it already, Sasha organised a fundraiser for the town of Motagua and nearby we're trying to generate 10,000 euros so we can contribute towards the rebuilding of people's homes and businesses around here people that need it most because it has happened there are people that don't have anywhere to go back to there'll be a link appearing up here on how you can read about all that and what we're doing we're in talks with local people that have been living here for years and trying to find out the best way to distribute this money so that it goes to the right places. Apparently in the past there's been some issues with that, including the last fire that happened, some of the money that was raised didn't go to the right place. So we are trying to target it and make sure it goes where it's needed best. We'll be posting updates on the GoFundMe page all about that. Our dinner is cooking away in there. It's yesterday's food, but we added some soy protein to it. They're eating out for a wee. Love this view. We really are fortunate that these trees up here didn't set on fire. On a much more pleasant note, most of you probably already know that we are giving away a week's free stay in a lovely villa down south. Currently there's only 128 people competing for this prize, so you've got very, very high odds of winning it. All you've got to do is become an eight miler and you're in with a chance. So click links up here to find out all about that. Sasha's joined me to say hit the thumbs up button. <laughs> Subscribe and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. And she left quite a bit, didn't she? Mm, ounce and a half. <laughs>